Hello all, welcome back to Answer Writing Initiative at 9 p.m. I'm Guna Madhivanan from Officers IAS Academy. So yes, what is the question which I gave? Blue economy could be the next multiplier of India's GDP and well-being. However, harnessing the benefits of the blue economy is not without challenges elaborate. So the question asks you to explain about how this blue economy uh, can be a, a multiplier of India's growth. So blue economy and India's growth. Right. And what are the uh, challenges in harnessing the benefits of this blue economy. That is what we are going to explain. So we can start the answer by defining what is blue economy. You can give very simple introduction. Right. You can talk about the potential of uh, blue economy with respect to India because the question is with respect to India's GDP. So blue economy in general, blue economy and India's GDP that you can highlight. The potential of uh, India's blue economy that you can highlight. So after highlighting the potential, you can also highlight the challenges because that is what is asked in the question. Blue economy, India and blue economy, potentials of Indian blue economy, challenges associated in harnessing the potential. Then you can go for conclusion. It's a 15 marker question. Right. So this much is sufficient, but if you want, you can also suggest some way forward in the conclusion. It can be very small, it can be very precise. You need not give five, six points in the way forward. Okay. Remember, you have expected to write only 250 words. Keep that in mind. So what is blue economy? Very simple. Sustainable use of ocean resources for improving the economic growth. Sustainable use of ocean resources for improving the economic growth. Right. At the same time, we should ensure that the ecosystem, the marine ecosystem, the ocean ecosystem should not be affected. Right. So blue economy refers to sustainable uh, use of ocean resources for the economic development, for improvement in GDP. Okay. At the same time, don't compromise the biodiversity. Don't affect the ecosystem, marine ecosystem. Without affecting that, make use of the benefits. Right, that is what World Bank is also defining. It is defining blue economy as a sustainable use of ocean resource, right, for improving the economic growth. At the same time, ensure that the ocean ecosystem is preserved. So now we have defined the blue economy. Now if we explain about the potential of blue economy in India. So in India has 7,500 square kilometers of coastline. I am including the islands. Andaman, Lakshadweep, everything I'm including, 7,500 kilometers of uh, uh, coastline we are having. And when you take the exclusive economic zone, exclusive economic zone is almost 2.2 million square kilometers. What is exclusive economic zone? So from the border, from the land border, up to 200 nautical miles, from the land border, up to 200 nautical miles, so one nautical mile is 1.8 kilometers roughly. So up to 200 nautical miles, whatever resource we see here that is exclusively for India, be it mineral resource, be it uh, uh, fisheries, everything is for India. So 7,500 kilometers of coastline, right? From that coastline up to 200 nautical miles in the oceans is for India. So 2.2 million square kilometers of ocean area, all the resources, fishes, aquaculture, minerals, right, that will be for India. Okay, beyond that exclusive economic zone, yes, we can definitely go beyond, that is called as high seas. So beyond this is called as high seas. I mentioned these terminologies in deep ocean mission topic. Friends, if you have not watched the deep ocean mission, please watch the video. You will have a better understanding of this topic as well. Okay, in the deep ocean mission, I have mentioned about high seas, uh, exclusive economic zones. So India is going to use all the resource in the exclusive economic zone beyond the exclusive economic zone, whatever area is called as high seas, which any country can explore. After getting approval from United Nations Seabed Authority, you can go and conduct uh, explorations. Our deep Indian ocean mission is also something which is on the high seas. So huge advantage India has, huge potential India has.
we are strategically located in the indian ocean in the central part of the indian ocean we are strategically located we have access to huge amount of ocean resources so huge potential currently the contribution of this blue economy is just 4% we have huge scope to multiply the contribution in gdp right so this much uh, access we have to the ocean region so that helps us to improve the uh, uh, access to mineral resources deep ocean mission aims to collect polymetallic nodules which we see in the central indian ocean basin polymetallic nodules is nothing but the fusion of several minerals several critical minerals cobalt nickel manganese so much is available in the deep ocean basins all those can be taken 10% of recovery of the mineral resources in the central indian ocean basin will provide as energy support for 100 years that too much potential we have so access to mineral resources right that is the advantage of the blue economy think about fisheries aquaculture government is also coming up with lot of uh, schemes we have uh, pradhan mandri matsya sampada yojana matsya sampada yojana aims to achieve 70 lakh tons of fish production by 2030 1 lakh crore worth of exports we want to achieve through fish exports right so on exploring fisheries aquaculture we have advantage in exploring minerals we have advantage see 7500 kilometers of coastline that means think about how many natural ports we can set up right we have major ports minor ports government has a scheme called as sagarmala sagarmala program in which government wants to modernize and come up with uh, port enhancement port led development is the philosophy behind sagarmala in some other class i will explain about sagarmala topic so port development right port development shipment activities mineral exploration fisheries aquaculture think about renewable energy tidal energy tidal energy is a renewable energy 7500 kilometers of coastline see how much scope we have to harness the tidal energy just how much just imagine what the wind source in the coastal region we can set up wind mills we can come up with uh, uh, equipments to harness the wind energy, to harness the tidal energy. So huge scope for renewable energy. Strategically also Indian Ocean, India's location in Indian Ocean becomes very crucial. So we can ensure maritime security in that region. That helps to achieve better economic growth. So huge potential we have. But this also comes up with a lot of challenges. So you can list out the potential, how blue economy can be next multiplayer whatever points I have given, mentioned I have given here, we can go through. Then you highlight the challenges, the biggest challenge is sustainable use. Our exploration should not lead to exploitation. On a sustainable manner, without affecting the biodiversity, we have to ensure we are making use of the benefits. Today, climate change is becoming a challenge because of the global warming, because of the sea level rise, because of the coastal cities are getting submerged. So anthropogenic activities is a challenge, natural climate change is a challenge and also we have a stiff competition around the world. See in the exclusive economic zone it is completely coming under India's control but in the high seas if we want to do some exploration then we see a lot of international competition. So we have to use our uh, uh, diplomacy in such a way we make use of the benefits. So that is another challenge. Security, piracy. Okay, piracy is biggest challenge in ensuring the benefits. Piracy is a biggest challenge, illegal activities, piracy, right? And also we have to ensure this development in the cold coastal areas will affect the coastal communities, right? The coastal communities depend upon fishing. So development in this region can affect the livelihood of the coastal communities. So government should come up with strategies, should come up with strategies to ensure that the benefits are more inclusive. The benefits are more inclusive. If you take the Sagarmala initiative, that is port-led development initiative, uh, government has clearly said that that initiative will also include training of coastal communities, skill development of coastal communities to ensure that they have a livelihood. Right. So that is another challenge. So what we need today is a proactive gover uh, governance, inclusive governance, more uh, investments, private participation, right, proper legislative measures, 
government is in right direction for example you take sagarmala initiative or you take the matsya sampada yojana initiative there are so many other initiatives which aims to improve see um, we have uh, kisan credit card scheme which is now been available for uh, uh, farmers involved in aquaculture and fisheries okay so that is going to help in improving the uh, livelihood of coastal communities right so government is taking lot of efforts that has to be appreciated at the same time these challenges what are we have discussed that has to be taken seriously so addressing that we can come up with a definitely we can come up with a way to improve the contribution of blue economy in multiplying our gdp no doubt all right so this is the concept that is what i have given here i have explained about what is uh, blue economy the potential of india the advantages of india in blue economy what are the challenges in harnessing okay then finally while concluding note you can come up with some kind of way forward if you want but if you are coming up with a way forward then you have to reduce some points here because you had to adhere to word limit or you can simply conclude conclude with some facts where you can highlight the way forward can be uh, merged with the conclusion and you can give a end to this answer okay i hope you got some clarity so shankara mahadevan yes actually many students have done well i will show the answers of three students okay so here shankara mahadevan has explained about blue economy yes then benefits of blue economy it will ensure food security as yes. but even nutritional security i would say food security as well as nutritional security because aquaculture fisheries that is also contributing also food part of food part of nutrition right then commerce trade transportation then oil and natural gas that is also a resource which you can exploit renewable source of energy revenue through tourism yes to this point i think it did not mention you can add that marine tourism there is also huge potential right for improving our economy then uh, challenges climate change see it's good that you are continuing your fifth point you are making it as next as sixth though it is separate subheading you are making it as sixth that is good i will always advise that so that when the evaluator comes at the end i will be looking at your last point as 10th point 11th point 12th point will get an impression that you have done 10 12 13 points ultimately the evaluator is going to give you the marks after looking at the last point so in at the last para if you see 15 points 16 points and the evaluator will get a good impression right i would suggest that please follow okay climate change is one issue poor connectivity the port facilities are challenging today we are not having uh, uh bigger sized ports today we are developing it so port infrastructure over exploitation of marine ecosystem government initiatives has been mentioned good but i would say you could have uh, integrated this initiatives in the conclusion and you could have written okay this is hanging separately it is hanging here instead of that you could have integrated that with conclusion that to address these challenges we have to have pro government policies for example we have ram mandri sampada yojana right sagarmala all this you could have mentioned in the way forward right the conclusion is simple and effective good very good then vijay kumar rp yes same you have started with the definition of blue economy and they have mentioned as india's advantages instead of giving india's advantage as the subheading you could have used the sentence given in the question itself how it can be a next multiplier for gdp right okay transport you say we can you make use of the uh, our coastal reaming uh, the route areas right almost 7500 kilometers of uh, coastal stretch we are having we can use it for transport logistical cost will input my reduce because when you transport something through road instead of that if you transport that through water that can save a lot of money logistical cost will will be reduced the price will be reduced okay so that point is good shipping industry yes definitely point taken energy development yes aquaculture marine biotechnology sustainable development goals sdf 14 very good so it is also good every time uh if you are able to mention that one of the 17 sdg goal in answer that will also look good challenges infrastructure overfishing marine pollution okay during this we have a dispute as well with other countries for example india sri lanka dispute has been maintained so that can also be had no problem so way forward yes so way forward you have given separately if possible you can integrate with this 
so that you will en you will en you will ensure that word limit word limit is slightly extra that you can work on it apart from that you have given a comprehensive answer punraj very neat answer introduced with blue economy and see blue economy is a multiplier of india's gdp i think you are using scale to put the boxes you don't have time in the actual exam hall you will not have time to put boxes using scales remember that All right so potential fishing eco tourism minerals seaweed sea grass that benefits energy great similarly challenges climate change overfishing right marine pollution that is in point which you can definitely consider right uh, release of effluents that is also something which you can make a note of it all right so you have concluded with uh, mentioning the sampada yojana fine completely fine it's a good answer right so yes so others um, om sneha khavya all you have written good answers okay i want to give some others also some uh, visibility in the evaluation process so i have included the new names but as usual om sneha kavya you have done good job kritika also i have have done good job right now question for today the climate change has emerged as the biggest threat to the global food security in this context how can gm crops help in strengthening resilience towards climate change friends i have made a video on gm crops okay you can watch that it is in the current affairs hit list series that gm uh, crops topic i have dealt which is not which will not provide you a direct answer for this question but which will give you a good understanding about what is gm crops okay and then you can try attempting this question climate change global food security gm crops right hope this initiative is useful we'll see you tomorrow till then bye take care